So in this video we're going to talk about entire radicals and mixed radicals and how to go from one to the other and vice versa. So what is an entire radical? An entire radical is where the entire number is underneath the root sign. So for example the square root of 32 we can see 32 is completely under the um, root sign. There's nothing else going on that's it's multiplied by. With the mixed radical we actually have a multiplication with a rational number. So we have 3 which is a rational number times the square root of 2. So again even though we don't have the multiplication sign you can think of it almost like polynomials or something like that. This is 3 times the square root of 2. Not everything is underneath that root sign. So it's almost like the radical has been broken up into two components. So here I have a mixed radical and I want to turn it into an entire radical. What I have to do is I have to take this 5 and somehow get it within that root sign. Now how would I do that? What we have to do is reform this number so if we went backwards the other way the answer would be 5. Well, how can I form a square root that would give us 5? Well, I know the square root of 25 is 5. So what I could do, I could rewrite the number 5 as the square root of 25. Because I know the square root of 25 is 5. And then instead of 5 times the square root of 11, it's now the square root of 25 times the square root of 11. I haven't changed anything, the value is still the same, I've just changed what that 5 looks like. Now why would I do this? Well if I have the square root of 25 times the square root of 11, one trick with radicals is I can kind of merge them together to create a single radical. I have everything underneath that root sign right now and all I have to do is kind of simplify. 25 times 11 is 275. And this is kind of what we have to do when we go from mixed radicals to entire radicals. This isn't actually the best way of doing it, but I think it's the most obvious when you're learning it for the first time. Because you can actually see I went from a 5 to a square root of 25. The values are the same. I just manipulated that number to make things a little bit easier. Now why isn't this the best way of doing it? Well, for this number, I knew the square root of 25 was 5. So it was quite easy. But what if we're dealing with a number that maybe we can't recognize the square root or maybe we're talking about something like a cubed root or a fourth root and it's something that we don't know off the top of our head. So there's actually a better way of doing this that kind of avoids that problem just a little bit. So instead of turning that 5 into the square root of 25, what I'm going to do is kind of the same math but it's going to look a little bit different. Instead of the square root of 25, I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of 5 squared. Now we know 5 squared is 25. The reason I'm doing it this way is because it's really easy to see. I'm just going from a 5 to a 5 squared. You don't even have to think about what is the square root of 25 or something like that. So you kind of just jump right into it. And of course I'm multiplying it by the square root of 11. Now since we have two radicals we can kind of merge them together so they're all under one root sign. And I have the square root of 5 squared times 11. We can simplify this a little bit. 5 squared is 25. That's a little bit easier to think of than oh, what is the square root of something times 11. And then we're just simplifying this further. 25 times 11 is 275. So the square root of 275. So this is actually the better way of doing it. Taking that rational number and doing the square root and square at the same time. One of the reasons this works too, if you want to look at it a different way, is a square root is really the opposite of a square. So when we're squaring and square rooting the 5 at the same time, it's almost like these cancel out with each other and we just have that 5. So here we have another one. We're going to take a mixed radical and turn it into an entire radical. I have 2 times the cubed root of 5. So now we're dealing with cubed roots. It's 2 times all of that. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to find a way where I can 
remake that too so I can put it within a cubed root. So I need something the cubed root of. And the easiest way to do this is just to say that I am going to take the cubed root of 2 cubed. Now again, you might be thinking, oh, okay, that looks a little bit weird. But remember, if I cube something, that's the opposite of cube rooting something. So these two would kind of cancel out with each other, just leaving me with a 2. So I know I'm doing it right. And that is going to be multiplied by what we had in our radical, which is the cubed root of 5. So now we have the cubed root of 2 cubed times the cubed root of 5. Now we just have to do a little bit of work. I know for multiplying radicals, we can merge them together. Just like this. And the reason we could actually merge them together is because they are both cubed roots. So why not just write it with one symbol? And now we have to do a little bit of simplification. So we have, we have a cubed root. And I know that 2 to the power of 3 is 8 times that 5. And then we're just going to simplify 8 times 5 is 40. So we've gone from a mixed radical with that 2 multiplying in front. We've merged it into our radical. And now we just have a single entire radical, the cubed root of 40. And we just have to practice going from one to the other. Here we have a different situation. We're given an entire radical, and I want us to convert it to a mixed radical. So instead of taking something that's multiplied in front and putting it within the radical, I'm going to break up what's already in the radical and pull something out of it so it multiplies with what's remaining. So the first thing you have to think about is how do we break up the number 27? And we're always thinking about multiplying. What two numbers multiply together to get 27? Now, sometimes it's different numbers. Um, in this case, since we're dealing with a square root, we want to think about what numbers will maybe give me a square root. In this example, it's fairly easy, though. I know 27 is the same as 9 times 3. So this is a common thing in math where we have to know how to break apart and put back together numbers. So I've broken up that 27 into 9 times 3. Now just like if we have two radicals multiplied together, we can merge it into one. We can also go the other way and say I have a single radical with things multiplied together and I'm going to break that radical apart. So I'm going to say I'm going to break this up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Now, hopefully you spot something very interesting. I know that the square root of 9 is 3. And then it's just 3 times the square root of 3. So the fact that I broke these up allowed me to see that I can actually find a square root of 9 and simplify things so I don't have that radical sign. I could not do that with just 27. So you can't just go, oh, the square root of 27 is something. It actually took me breaking up that number into something that was a little more useful. Here we have another example of the square root of 50. I need to find something that I can pull out of this radical, so it's a rational number being multiplied in front. 50 is interesting because you can break it up into different ways. You can go 10 times 5, you can go 2 times 25, and you might be thinking, oh, maybe it doesn't matter too much. But in this case, I actually want to break 50 up into 25 times 2. 
I do not want to break it up into 5 times 10. And that might be your first instinct to go for 5 times 10. But the reason I want to break it up this way is because since we're dealing with square roots, right away, as soon as I see that 25, I know 25 is a perfect square, and I can take the square root of it to get 5. I can't do that if I'm taking the square root of 10 or 5. So you want to look at those special numbers that make it easier for you to simplify things. So in this case, I'm going to break this up further into 25, square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And I know the square root of 25 is just 5, so it becomes 5 times the square root of 2. Now in this case, we cannot simplify the square root of 2, so it just stays like that, and that's why we get our mixed radical. But this is how you go from taking an entire radical to a mixed radical and mixed radical to an entire radical.